Oh, I hate vegetables. I hate vegetables. <laughs> vegetables? Vegetable, meat, meat, vegetable, meat. Vegetables. Vegetables again. I hate vegetables. You eat only beans. You've been told your whole life that eating vegetables is healthy and good for you. But what if I told you that some vegetables could actually be causing you harm? That's right, those greens on your plate may not be as innocent as they seem. Are vegetables really as healthy as we've been led to believe? Or have we been blindly following dietary advice without understanding the full story? For decades, we've been bombarded with messages promoting vegetables as nutritional powerhouses essential for a balanced diet. Eat your veggies has become a mantra passed down through generations, but recent research has uncovered some amazing truths about the potential downsides of overconsumption. So stick around because by the end of this video, you'll have a whole new perspective on the vegetables you thought you knew. Todd, would you like some mixed vegetables? Hell no! <gasps> what did you say? I said I don't want any damn vegetables! Alright, that's it, young man. No Bible stories for you tonight! You're going down, Pete! Starting with the history. Back in the day, our ancestors didn't munch on salads or snack on carrot sticks like we do today. Nope. Veggies were more of an afterthought than a dietary staple. Let's take a trip down memory lane to understand why. First up, the hunter-gatherer lifestyle. These folks had to go where the food was, and in many harsh environments, plants were scarce. Animal sources like meat, eggs, and fish were more plentiful and packed a bigger nutritional punch. With all that physical activity, our ancestors needed dense, calorie-rich foods to fuel their bodies. Chasing down a woolly mammoth burned way more energy than picking berries. As humans transitioned to agriculture, grains became the go-to crop. They were easy to cultivate, store, and provided a reliable source of nutrition. Veggies played second fiddle to these staple crops, plus in many cultures, Vegetables were seen as poor people's food, while the wealthy indulged in a wider variety of fare. Even today, some modern diet trends like paleo emphasize meat-heavy meals. Overlooking the diversity of plant foods our ancestors likely consumed, this has led us to the misconception that vegetables were merely an occasional side dish in ancient times. The truth is, our relationship with veggies has been complicated throughout history. They weren't always the nutritional superstars we view them as today. In fact, people now question the health benefits of veggies, because researchers revealed some shocking truth. Bladders removed in some cases. 98 people from 22 different states making this the biggest multi-state E. coli outbreak in at least 12 years. The affected region is Yuma, Arizona. You know how we try to avoid pesticides in our food? Well, get this. Plants have their own built-in pesticides that we end up consuming. Crazy, right? These natural pesticides are like the plant's own defense system against bugs and other threats. And here's the kicker. We may actually be exposed to higher amounts of these natural toxins compared to synthetic pesticide residues. That's because so many plant species produce these chemicals as a survival mechanism. But that's not all. Plants also contain other toxins called secondary metabolites. These are like little bodyguards that protect the plant from bacteria, fungi, insects, and even hungry animals trying to munch on them. These toxins can be found in all parts of the plant – roots, stems, fruits, you name it. And they come in different forms, each with its own potential risks. Take lectins, for example. These little guys are found in beans and legumes, and if not properly cooked, they can cause some serious tummy troubles and even interfere with nutrient absorption. Then there are cyanogenic glycosides, which sound like something out of a sci-fi movie. Movies, 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 movies. Let's start with the fiber factor. Vegetables are packed with dietary fiber, which is great for keeping things moving smoothly. But too much of a good thing can lead to gas, bloating, constipation, and even diarrhea. Your gut bacteria can go into overdrive trying to break down all that fiber, resulting in some not-so-pleasant side effects. But that's not all. Kale and broccoli also contain goitrogens, compounds that can interfere with thyroid function and iodine uptake. Too much of these greens could potentially lead to hypothyroidism, especially for those already dealing with thyroid issues. And let's not forget about celery, a common allergen that can cause severe reactions like anaphylactic shock in some people. Even if you're not allergic, overdoing it on celery can lead to gas, 
bloating, and nutrient deficiencies due to its high fiber content. Other veggies like spinach, beets, and soy products are high in oxalates, which can bind to calcium and increase the risk of kidney stones. And nightshades like tomatoes and eggplants contain solanine, which can cause digestive issues and even joint pain for some folks. So does this mean we should ditch the veggies, or how many vegetables should we take? Seconds on dessert. But that's not fair! We will get into this, but before we dive into the answer, give us a nutrient punch. Smash that like button if you like this video, and subscribe if you are new to the channel. Alright, so we've covered the potential downsides of going overboard with certain veggies, but that doesn't mean you should ditch them altogether. Vegetables are still an essential part of a balanced diet. It's all about finding that sweet spot. The key is moderation and variety. Instead of loading up on just one or two types of greens, mix it up. Incorporate a colorful assortment of veggies into your meals to ensure you're getting a diverse range of nutrients without overdoing it on any single one. Now, if you're a hardcore veggie lover who's considering going full-on herbivore, more power to you. Just remember to include a variety of plant-based proteins, grains, and healthy fats to keep your diet balanced and nutrient-dense. Speaking of balance, did you know that proper cooking methods can actually reduce those pesky anti-nutrients we talked about earlier? Boiling and soaking can help deactivate lectins and other troublemakers, making your veggies even more gut-friendly. So, the next time you hear about the latest superfood craze, take it slow. All right, we've covered a lot of ground today, and it's time to wrap things up. Let's start by addressing the elephant in the room. Yes, vegetables are generally very healthy and should be a part of any well-balanced diet. But, as we've seen, there are some nuances and potential downsides to be aware of. The key takeaway here is moderation and variety. Instead of loading up on just one or two types of veggies, mix it up. Incorporate a colorful assortment of greens, reds, oranges, and purples into your meals. This way you'll get a diverse range of nutrients without overdoing it on any single one. And if you can, opt for organic produce whenever possible. This can help minimize your exposure to synthetic pesticides, although we can't escape those pesky natural toxins that plants produce entirely. But let's not forget the bigger picture here. For most people, the benefits of eating vegetables typically outweigh the potential downsides we've discussed. These nutrient-packed powerhouses are loaded with fiber, vitamins, minerals, and antioxidants that can support overall health and well-being. So don't let the fear of lectins, oxalates, or goitrogens scare you away from your daily dose of veggies. Just be mindful of portion sizes and listen to your body. If you start experiencing digestive issues or other adverse effects, it might be time to switch things up or consult a healthcare professional. At the end of the day, a balanced and varied diet is the key to reaping the rewards of vegetables without the potential pitfalls. So, go ahead and enjoy that salad, roasted Brussels sprouts, or veggie stir-fry. Just don't go overboard and you'll be golden.